Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. One time a man complained to his boss about a fellow employee. The man told the boss every time he went by the other man's office, he always found him staring out the window. The man wanted to know how the other fellow got away with it. The boss told him that if he came up with ideas like the man in question did, he'd get paid for staring out the window too. Ideas come from minds that do creative thinking. These ideas are what have given us the wonderful machines and gadgets we have today. In our story today, we find a young man who has an idea. I like to call this one... The Tugboat Cowboy. At Junction City, Bob Mitchell, usually called Unc, owns the Inland River Barge Company. Unc's nephew, Dick, works for his uncle, and it's more or less been the understanding that someday Dick would take over the business. But right now, Unc is pacing the dock in a stew because both of his tugboats are laid up with engine trouble. What's the matter, Unc? What's your face all powdered up for? Oh, the otter's laid up with a busted engine now, too. Of all the businesses in the world, I had to get mixed up in river barging. It's a dumb and stupid kind of work. If one tug ain't laying down on the job, the other is. Or else a barge has got a leak in it, or else it's new houses to buy. It's always something to keep a man hopping. Never a minute's peace. Well, Unc, that's business. I don't know what you're yapping about, though. You've made money. Sure, I've made money, Barney. But I worked hard for it, too. Every winter, we spend from October to Christmas busting ice on the river just so we can get enough stuff in here to carry everybody over the hard, cold part of the winter. Then the big freeze comes, and we haul everything out of the water and into the shed so we can get them ready for spring and floodwaters. <sighs> I'm tired of it, Barney. I thought the general idea was to let Dick take over so as you could relax and take it easy. Huh. What's that tugboat cowboy know about this business? Besides, things are slowing down up with the railroads and trucks working against us. You'd do better to get something else. You know what I think I'm going to do, Barney? Yeah, you're going to quit this here business and go live where there ain't no water. You're not even in bathtubs. <laughs> How'd you know that? Because you told me that at least two dozen times in the past year and a half. All right, so... Well, this time I mean it. I made up my mind. I'm going to sell out rock, stock, and life jackets. Boy, I'm glad that meeting's over. <laughs> you said it. We're not used to sitting for several hours in one shot. <laughs> I'm sure glad to get out and stretch my legs. I feel like a pretzel. <laughs> you look like a pretzel. You're not standing very straight. Yeah, give me time. You old muscles of mine don't stretch so quick like yours. Guess they're getting like old rubber. No give. <laughs> Stumpy, you kill me. <laughs> yeah, come on, fellas. Let's walk over to the barge company. <laughs> Ain't you got that load of 50 gallon drums yet, Bill? I know. What's so funny about that? You ordered them nigh into two months ago. I could make them myself, but now... You can say that again, Stumpy. That's why I want to stop over at the barge company office and find out what's holding up delivery. In a way, we'll kill two birds with one stone while we're here at Junction City. Yeah, that's a good idea. I ordered the drums from the factory in Central City, and Unc was supposed to bring them here, and then they'd be trucked to Naughty Pine. But we could have carried them one at a time at this rate of speed. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's find out. What do you mean I don't do things right? 
What do you mean by telling that to a man who's been in this business 40 years? Unc, I'm not trying to insult you, but simply to point out where you're slipping. Where I'm slipping? Why, you young upstart. I was skipper of a tugboat before you wore out your first pair of three-cornered pants. And what's more, you're still not dry behind the ears, you, you, you river cowboy. You handle a tug like it was a kiddie car. And someday you're going to rip the bottom out of one of them, and then we'll see how smart you are. You'll be laughed off the river. Will you let off the throttle long enough for me to explain? All right, go ahead and explain. Not that it'll do any good. Nobody can tell you a thing around here, but... Well, I'm going to tell you what your big problem is, and that's the plain and simple fact that you don't take care of your equipment. Says who? Says me. Your tugs are old, but they're good. And if you'd let me take them in one at a time, once a month, for a routine checkup, these breakdowns wouldn't happen. But no, you've got to run them until they're gasping their last breath. And then you get sore because they stop dead and refuse uh -oh. to move. Oh, I suppose because you went to diesel. Ah, oh, this will never do. I do about you better speak up so they know we're here. Oh, I stay. I'm not through yet. I've been saving this for a while. Hey, you two fellas. You're going to get high blood pressure if you keep this up. Bill, what are you fellas doing here? Oh, hello, fellas. I didn't hear you come in. We waited for the intermission so we could break in. I've come after the 50-gallon drums I ordered two months ago. Ask him about the barrels. I'm not in business anymore. <laughs> What's with him, Dick? Oh, the usual. Sit down, fellas. I'll fix some fresh coffee. Then I'll tell you all about it. Help yourself, fellas. There's some fresh sweet rolls under the cake cover. Ah, thanks. thanks, Dick. Uh, do you think Unc is serious this time, Dick? Well, I wouldn't be surprised that he is, Bill. I know he's threatened to quit many times, but... Well, that only goes on for so long, and then it finally happens. Hey, is business that bad? Oh, it's dropped off some, but... Well, that's his own fault for the reasons you fellas heard as you came in. <laughs> no doubt you did hear us. We were yelling loud enough to be heard a country mile. <laughs> yeah, we heard you all right. Sure, but why, it's normal, isn't it, to have a disagreement once in a while? Yeah, maybe it is, but, well, I don't like it. I just got a little fed up with this perpetual grumbling when nine-tenths of it is his fault. I always heard that you were going to take over the business and Unc was going to retire. I guess Unc's changed his mind. He thinks I should be in a better business than this. Perhaps he's right, Dick. He's been in this game a long time, you know. Oh, I appreciate his experience, but well, he's lost his fight. Well, there isn't any business that doesn't have its ups and downs, and the river barges are no exceptions. So the thing we have to do is to inject new ideas into this job to meet the change in conditions. Have you got some ideas? Have I? Oh, man, that's all I've been doing for months, is thinking up ways to give this business a shot in the arm. Would you tell us your ideas? Well, sure, why not? I know you fellows can be trusted to keep quiet. My, my first idea is to haul truck trailers on barges. You know, the railroads do it with their piggyback service. Piggyback on barges? Sure, why not? Why not is right. You're using your head for something more than to keep your ears apart, Sonny. That's a real idea you got there. I think it is too, Stumpy. I've carefully thought it out from all angles. Yeah, have you talked to Unc about this idea of yours? Sure, until I'm blue in the face. He tells me I'm daydreaming and says I should spend less time doing it than watch where I'm going when I'm on the river before I crack up a tug. That's why he calls me a tugboat cowboy. Because I have fun when I'm on the river by dodging the sandbars instead of plowing the tugs through them at full speed. Which, by the way, is pretty hard on the tugs. I can see that all right. You think your ideas will pay off? And how? Well, look at the map of the river. We can haul cargo on the barges up the river and save two days as against railroad time and three days against truck time. Well, if that's the case, I don't see where you've got any problem selling your idea. Well, I don't think I would either, Bill. Except to Unc. And he owns this outfit. Uh, perhaps there's some way we can persuade the old fellow. Oh, I hope so. Hey, well, I've got to get down to the dock and take a look at the tug's engines, find out why they won't go. You fellas want to come along? Right. Sure. Glad to. Yeah. Dick, you sure know your business. That diesel's purring like a kitten. I guess I ought to. Went to school for three years to study diesel engines. 
And this is a good point at hand, though. If we put these engines on a routine checkup program, these things would be caught. It was obvious what was wrong as soon as I began looking the engine over. Yep. You got a strong point there, young feller. Now look right here. This gauge tells me that the oil pressure fluctuates too much. I think there's a small leak in the line. If I didn't catch this now in a checkup, the engine would run until the line ruptured and then we'd be in a mess. So you can see the problem I'm up against. Yeah, I can understand now that you're beating your head against Uncle is the same thing as a stone wall. You ever thought about leaving him and going into business for yourself? Oh, I, I've thought about it, Bill. But, well, I like the old gent. He's raised me since I've been knee-high to a scupper, and he's like my own father. Oh, he's rough, and he's tough, and he can still lick his weight in wildcats. But on the other hand, he sent me through school and then to diesel school. Well, that cost a lot of money, because he wouldn't let me work while I was in school. Said I needed all my time for studies. He's my family. Mm -hmm. I understand, Dick. Oh, but he's stubborn as a mule stuck in the mud, and that's what infuriates me. We could have it real nice, but it's one battle after the other. How would you like it if I talked to Unc? Would you? I've been trying to work up enough nerve to ask you for help. Oh, I'd be pleased if you would talk to him. Okay, I'll give it a try. Well, this seems like a good place to sit and think, Uncle. Huh? Oh, hello, Bill. Yes, it is. Sit down. Thanks. Yep, I've done a lot of thinking here at the edge of the dock in years gone by. Uh, don't you think you can do some more right now for Dick's sake? Oh, Bill, I'm tired. I'm tired of thinking, tired of working. Just plain tired and disgusted. Unc, have you ever thought of retiring and letting Dick run the business? Yeah. Why don't you? Oh, I'd rather die with my boots on. <laughs> don't try to pull the wool over my eyes, you old fox. Hmm? What do you mean? I mean, I wasn't born yesterday, and I know why you won't retire. Oh, is that so? Suppose you tell me. You don't want Dick to show you up. Also, you're afraid to grow old. Unc. You should be enjoying the retiring years of your life. Hunting, fishing, taking trips, or just plain loafing. You know, it's a real credit to the founder of a business if he can develop a younger man to take over and make the business hum after the founder steps aside. Oh, you could come around once in a while for old time's sake, but just to visit. Why hold the young horses back? Let them do the work that they're supposed to do, and let the old horses stand out in the pasture under a shade tree and rest, and... Watch the youngsters work like you did when you were young. Uh, maybe you're right. I ain't made up my mind yet. Give Dick his chance, Unc. I know he thinks the world of you, and he wants to build up your business as a tribute to you. Every day, problems are a challenge to young men. Well, they're a burden to men who should retire. You know, I think you will like Dick pretty well to care for him all these years like you have. <laughs> yep, he is a good scrapper, ain't he? And he's got brains, too. Yeah. Why not let him use them? Well, I know what his grades were at diesel school. One of the smartest lads that ever took a range to an engine. You're right. And you're the man who's holding him back. If you keep this up long enough, he might leave you. Do you really think he might do that? Why, the ungrateful... Oh, whoa, whoa there. If he does leave you, it'll be your fault. He's like a horse chafing at the bit, Dunk. He'll do one of two things. Either break loose and run away or give up. Oh, I wouldn't want him to do either. Why, he's the best man on the river. Well, next to me, that is. Oh, uh, come off it. Admit that he's better than you. And if it's true... The credit goes to you because you trained him and developed his skills. You gave him the incentive to become as good as or better than his teacher. Be proud of him, but not jealous. Oh, I never gave this that.